Tracing is hard. There are two main things that are hard about it. One, it requires refactoring a lot of code. So, you know, if you take that function like this, that's as sort of a, as simple as it gets, using open telemetry instrumentation, you would you you would need to make changes something like this. So you need to wrap your function calls and start active span, use span.add event instead of console log, et cetera, et cetera. This is a pretty trivial example, so you would say, hmm, this is not too bad, but you know, code bases get large and this this is a, this is expensive. The other piece is that tracing needs tooling. All right, welcome to Tracing on Day Zero. Uh, we're going to be talking APIs, backends, tracing logs, and we're going to try to cram it everything in 10 minutes before I get kicked off the stage. So uh, uh, let's, uh, let's go. Imagine that you have an a endpoint that you're fetching data from. We're in the city that I heard likes lobsters a lot, so I use slash API slash lobster for, for this example that we're going to see throughout. Um, and here's a simple sort of a mock implementation signature of your API. So you have your classic get method, you have your URL, and then you have a handler where we have the part that like does something um, and finally you return uh, the result. So how do you know what's going on in the body of the handler? We all know what this is, uh, and this is usually the first thing that we reach for when we're starting to work on something locally. And so we sprinkle in some here's, um, we differentiate code paths with an if statement branches, we have to, you know, mix it up, we can't use the same words all the time. And then we have even more branches, and we keep going. And then finally, we log a property of a nested JSON object and like, great, uh, we've arrived. Um, so not ideal. It works, but it can work better. So uh, what else is here? Before we go forwards, uh, my name is Lodinas. You can call me Lau. I'm a product engineer at Fiberplane Online. I'm at either at underscore Lorinas on the unnamed sites uh, and at Katurasakis on uh, GitHub. When I'm not working, I'm zooming around Amsterdam uh, where I'm based and on my bike. Uh, and I like to make life difficult for myself by building small split keyboards and getting from point A to point B in the most difficult way possible, either by hiking or uh, rock climbing. All right, what is tracing? Little crash course. So let's take our first example. We have the a little a little more details on um, what's going on inside of our handler. So we have a little auth check. Maybe we make a database connection query. We do some kind of data processing and we update the cache. So that's the sort of the layout of what what what's going on in this in this typical um, handler. So how do we get a nice uh, waterfall visualization like this? is most of the times you'll end up using tracing. Tracing is essentially a small piece of data, an object that you pass along in each part of this request, the auth check, the DB connection, and complement with, uh, with the data and build it up along the way as this request gets, gets processed. I, when I'm learning as something new, I like to just take a look at the data structure itself. What does it actually look like? And so here's a very simplified version. The trace uh, is, oh, well, this is actually a span. It contains several key elements. There's a trace ID, a span ID, a parent, span ID, start time, end time. Um, and these become the uh, building blocks that uh, end up informing of, uh, of the trace itself. So we're going to go through each uh, point, uh, point by point, spans being the, 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 the main building block that are defined with a span ID. And the easiest way to think of them are that they're function calls and returns. Um, they have a start time and an end time. And this is what makes it possible to use them to draw how far the function call spans. That's the, or the word. Spans can be nested. That's why we have the parent span ID. So we have, you know, function one that calls a function two. And so a function two is nested under the function one. Uh, span one, uh, span two is nested under the span of one. And effectively, a trace is a collection of these spans that we then bundle under a trace ID. And in the context of APIs, and honestly, most of the time in web development, when you, when you use tracing, 
trace is a collection of these requests that define uh, 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 is a collection of these spans that define the request response lifecycle. So you know you have your handler at the top, and then you have any of these like auth functions, DB connections, all of these uh, nested as spans underneath. Uh, then we have events that are attached to a span, and events are anything like exceptions, moments, even console logs that I mentioned at the at the beginning. They're singular moments. Their start time and end time is too small or meaningless for the observation. And so, therefore, we just mark it as a dot on the span itself. And finally, we have attributes. That's the fourth piece of this, which is they describe the trace event or span or what it is. So, attributes are key value pairs. They can be anything like function name, URL route, method, anonymized customer data, uh, if this is relevant for you. And this is the data that fundamentally makes tra tracing helpful. So with tracing, we get what we'd already have from logs that we know, console log, um, what's inside our API. But unlike logs, unlike with logs, with tracing is much easier to go as deep or as high as we want. So if we go back, we can take you know our initial log, which is sort of a moment of a moment in time. You know, and we keep adding these, and they soon become overwhelming and unmanageable because it's just a stream of data that is kind of painful and, uh, and in production uh, can be quite expensive to work with. Using trace ID, we can bind these individual logs to specific requests. Trace ID defines a specific request and response life cycle in time, and so we can align all of these logs as moments in time all along the span. If you know if you set the if you, if you set the trace attributes correctly, you can also quickly identify the specific function calls that may have triggered an exception. Tracing can also help us get a bird's eye view. So each trace, each span contains duration information, and so we can use that information to either uh, in extract data to map the, for example, response times for our endpoint, or if we are being very advanced, we plot them in histograms so we can identify and investigate the low, low performing outliers. So all of this is good, but there's a catch. Ah, thank you. Tracing is hard. And there are two main things that are hard about it. Uh, one, it requires refactoring a lot of code. So you know, if you take that function like this, that's as sort of as simple as it gets, using open telemetry instrumentation, you would you you would need to make changes to something like this. So you need to wrap your function calls and start active span use span.add event instead of console log, et cetera, et cetera. This is a pretty trivial example, so you would say, mm, this is not too bad, but you know, code bases get large and this, this, is a, this is expensive. The other piece is that tracing needs tooling to be useful. So you know, if we go back to our here example, that's five characters that you log into standard out and you kind of get information, that's, that's cool. That's a sort of a low effort to, 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 to value. Meanwhile, a trace, a fully decked out trace is going to look something like this, which is we can't read JSON. Um, you need to send this data somewhere to be processed and to be visualized. And so in the current environment, you're going to have to probably spin up Docker uh, and something that could collect these traces. All of this means that there's no on-ramp for tracing. And so you sort of have these two stages when you're developing a product. Before users, you have just, your focus is just features. You're trying to make something work, make something useful. Um, and you kind of probably don't care about this. And then afterwards, suddenly you have to like, okay, now we, this needs to actually work. Um, and then you hi either hire developers with expertise, you buy a vendor, you have to train your developers, um, all of which is expensive effort. And the question is like, how can we empower individual developers to maybe start get started with this earlier? And we actually have a lot of good success stories in, in I think, in, in the history of our industry, which is that local dev development, anything that can help us in local development is good. We've, you know, we've made a lot of progress. Our, lap our laptops are very capable. We can create very fast feedback loops. Individual devs are empowered. Uh, we have industry successes like Vite. Uh, that's pretty good evidence for this. And we should use local tracing in, we should tra use tracing in local development not just as proof of concepts and as demos, but actually as a daily driver of our development workflow. 
Why? Uh, well, aside from everything that I mentioned before, uh, that about context-specific information and rich details and all that, we can keep our consoles clean and readable on each API request. So Vite clears the console on each reload. Maybe we could separate that information for each uh, request that you make on, uh, on an endpoint. Uh, we can log any data at will. Uh, if you log too much, too many JSON blobs in your in your in your uh, console, the old will become unreadable. Tracing can help separate that information. We can surface errors faster, um, and we can use traces in LLM prompts as well. Uh, these these are available artifacts of like what just happened in this request. And if you're if you're using LLM in your development, that's that's um, more usable in the in the whole uh, process. A uh, result of that would be an easier on-ramp. Once you've used traces locally, you will have much easier time using the same uh, tool in production. I was going to do a demo, but I'm looking at the time, and I don't think I have time for it. So uh, come up to me at the, at, at, at the break. But a few links, and I'll put the slides up as well on how you can get into this. Open Telemetry is a good place. Uh, the tool I work, that I work for is called Fiberplane. So if you're any any if any of this is of interest to you, uh, come talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. The first question: Where was that bouldering picture taken? In France. France. Yes, in uh, Fontainebleau. Nice. It's a, a big rock field for uh, the most difficult ways to climb a rock. <laughs> That's all of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you find tracing to be mo uh, to be useful on the front end, or is it primarily a back end tool? Uh, currently, it's primarily a back end tool, um, and that's uh, mostly due to how um, um, the like there are some specific tools that are, um, APIs that are available in the back end that we don't have in the front end. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of can't really have full on tracing yet. But I think once we have it, and namely that's async context. Um, the having a full trace from from the front end to the back end uh, will be definitely useful. Cool. Uh, well, there's more questions coming in, uh, so if you could answer those in the Discord. Uh, but we have run out of time, and thank you so much. Let's thank give you. them a round of applause. Thank you.